So I've seen a lot of photographers post their favorite photos from 2020, like a top five, top 10 type of thing. And I got to thinking, you know, maybe I should take the bait on this. Maybe I should share these images. Now, the natural thought that comes into my mind was me more than anyone. I'm excited to see 2020 go away and never to return. So why would I want to revisit that in the photos? However, I thought, you know, maybe looking at the photos could be kind of therapeutic in a way. Going back and looking at experiences and remembering the experiences that I did have as a photographer, getting out when I could and where I could to capture the images. And what I found is I actually didn't go out that much, but when I did, I was much happier looking back at those things and, and seeing what I was able to capture while I was out in the field. So I thought, why not go ahead and do the same thing, share my top 10 photos. Well, maybe not really photos. Some of these are time lapses that I really enjoyed capturing when I was out in the field. So top 10 pieces of content maybe that I got in the field while I was out shooting when I could. Let's start off with this first photograph of a monkey that I photographed in Kenya. And it looks like it's smiling at the camera, but it was actually showing its teeth to me, trying to intimidate me because we were so close in our vehicles and this was like the alpha male in the pack. I, I was able to capture this and I was very fortunate to be able to go to Kenya in February of 2020 before the pandemic really got to a global scale. I remember coming back, you know, right before March is when the lockdown started to happen. And I remember going through these images and thinking how fortunate I actually was on timing here to be able to go on this trip and photograph things in a completely different culture in a completely different country. And this is one of those photographs that I really enjoyed capturing a fun experience the whole trip. We were there for nine days and I got so many images of wildlife, which really isn't in my wheelhouse of photography, but it was still fun to go out and photograph uh, wildlife and experience something completely different. Now, the second image is probably my favorite image captured of the entirety of 2020. Maybe not the one that got the most likes, but this black and white photograph of a just portrait of a giraffe with so much detail, so much contrast, so much clarity and sharpness in the image. Um, just really, I just really enjoy this image. Black and white's not in my wheelhouse. Wildlife photography is not in my wheelhouse. So I think that pairing those two things that I'm not very good at or I haven't quite figured out to the level that I want to yet is why I appreciate this photograph so much. It's kind of like those landscape photos that I used to get when I was first starting out that I nailed and I was like, yes, I, I know I'm not there yet with all that I know, but I'm really happy that I got such a high quality image here. That's how I kind of feel about this photograph uh, while we were in Kenya and kind of just silhouetted portrait shot of a giraffe. So let's bounce out of Kenya. Let's go to a completely different style for number three on my list. This is a macro ethereal shot of some fern leaves as they were first coming out of the fern frond. This was, I believe, either April or May. I'm not really sure about when the exact date was, but this was on a trip uh, to East Tennessee. It was a cabin trip with my family and it was just supposed to be kind of a relaxing few days away from home that turned into like a creative flow of photography like I had never experienced before. Meaning I went out on this trail, ended up spending basically all day out on the trail and just kept getting photos after photos after photos. And it's because the light was kicking off so much, but I photographed this with a lens baby velvet lens, which has been such a cool way to photograph macros this year for me and a creative outlet, I feel like from the mundane that can be landscape photography or the frustrations. I mean, I've found I can photograph with this lens in any condition and anywhere in the world. So I've really enjoyed uh, photographing with it. On the same day is when we get number four and, and I continued my hike down into this like ravine valley that had a river running through it, mosses were everywhere. And I found this old 
tree stump that was growing all around this boulder that was sitting right by the water. And just the lush greens, the light that was coming through was an incredible scene to photograph. Now I photographed this in a multiple exposure style, trying to get out as much light detail as I could down in the shadows, out of the highlights. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I did a course on this photograph. I will link it below in the video description and in the comments section if you guys wanna check that out on how I edited this photograph. I think it's only like 15 bucks, so it's not really that expensive. But if you wanna learn how I post-process my forest photography, that could be a really good look at kind of the style that I like to use. Number five is actually from the same exact day. So when I say I was in a creative flow, you can start to see like how good the light was and how good conditions were on this day. This is a very popular waterfall along this same hike in East Tennessee that I had never been to before. I had seen a lot of images from it from some of my friends like Dusty Doddridge has, has photographed this waterfall before and I'd always wanted to go because it's a really unique waterfall in that it's hard to reach with a wide angle lens but because the waterfall itself is kind of so small within the frame that I think it's really unique in the ways that you can use the rocks in the foreground with a circular polarizer to create a leading line or a foreground element with what you have. Not really focus so much on the waterfall itself, but the entire scene in entirety. I think with waterfall photography, so many times the waterfall tends to dominate the entire scene. I kind of like how this one turned out in the fact that the waterfall is so small in the background that it's kind of almost like a complementary subject to the entire composition. So let's go to number six. Number six is actually a time-lapse sequence that I photographed. Now this is kind of a, a bittersweet story in that I was able to photograph this incredible time-lapse that was going off with uh, storms and these summer storms that like to pop up in the Midwest and the South during the summer because of the heat and the humidity. These really get churning up in the afternoons. But I photographed this time-lapse of a solitary tree in a farm field and just the light that was going on and, and the detail in the clouds and everything that was kicking off. And there's one part in the time-lapse where the clouds kind of open up in a circle right above the tree and kind of cast the light right down on it that I thought really made the sequence what it was. And it was my first time kind of trying to find storms to photograph and find compositions on the fly while these were popping up and occurring and disappearing really quickly too. Um, so it was a really fun day, a fun experience, but the bitter part of the day was that this is the same day that my Sony 70-200 got blown off the top of my car and smashed on the ground and exited my life and entered the life of Sony Repair Purgatory for the next six months. Next up on the list is kind of like a small detail scene that I found in North Alabama. Now, when I think of North Alabama, I think of flat forest with linear trees as far as the eye can see. But I went scouting to some new locations um, and I found a lot of cool scenes and a lot of karst systems and a lot of boulders and, and uh, older forests that have a lot of differences in tree growth and foliage. And I was really excited to find locations that were still kind of close to me, but that I didn't have to travel so far because of the pandemic. So what I like about this is just the overall simplicity of it. You have a tree root coming down the very center of the frame. You have different textures and contrasts on the left side versus the right side. And there's just a lot of good light detail kicking off going on the tree root itself and then kind of casting shadows off into the distance on the right part of the frame. So I really enjoyed finding this scene and photographing it. And it wasn't the most easy photograph to post-process, believe it or not. I really had a lot of difficulty and I'm actually still to this day continuing to play with this image. I probably won't go back and completely repost it with new edits to it because I think 
new edits kind of diminish the moment of when you are actually out photographing. Uh, I, I've been playing with this photograph with new techniques and editing to try and get better at those techniques, but I want to keep this photograph intact to remember it for what I knew at the time and the experience, not what I didn't know and resent the photograph because I didn't know these things at the time, if that makes sense. Number eight on the list is actually from uh, the same location that I photographed all those spring waterfalls and forest scenes and the, and the macro fern leaves with that ethereal look. It's actually from the same location. So I went back in the fall thinking and knowing that a lot of the fall leaves were gonna be out in this location at the time that I went. And I actually went looking for foggy conditions because I knew that that had been reported in this area that day. So I drove out there in the morning, but what I found was a lack of fog, but a really good detail shot of some fall leaves that are actually above the water. So I photographed this shot from a bridge that was up on top of this scene. So I was photographing from this bridge, looking down on these leaves, and then the next layer down below that is the rushing water of the river below. So getting this aerial kind of like bird's eye view shot of maybe something you would get with a drone if you didn't have a bridge, but I was able to do it with a long exposure using a tripod. Now I photographed this several different times trying to get the water exactly how I wanted it behind these leaves, which was no small feat in and of itself. There were so many photographs taken this day that it was very confusing to go through and edit these, trying to find the perfect one that I wanted to use. But I just love the simple composition, but also the contrast and still leaves above rushing water down below. So you don't always have to think of contrast as light or highlights and shadows. Contrast can be movement, it can be size, it can be an idea that you're trying to get across in an image too. Number nine is another time lapse that I photographed, but this time I photographed this time lapse in a location that I've been to so many times before. I've been to this location in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but I'm revisiting a lot of the same locations that I've been to over and over to work on different techniques while I'm there. So I'm tired of taking the same photographs and the same scenes over and over unless I get insane conditions in these. And I've started to use techniques like time-lapse to capture them in a new way. And it's really revitalized my personal connection to these locations. They're no longer tired locations or places that I'm you know, bored with when I do go because I've seen it before. Um, they've really revitalized my appreciation for them and it really revitalized my creative vision on places instead of just going somewhere once, taking a shot and leaving. Uh, going back multiple times and trying to get the same photo is tiring at times, but going back and trying different techniques can really spur creativity on. And then the last image that we have here in 2020, rounding it up, is probably one of the last ones I took in 2020. It's a waterfall shot. And I've passed over this waterfall. It's actually kind of like the leaves detail shot over water. It's underneath a bridge, but it's more of at like a 45 degree angle that you can shoot at. And I've never captured an image that I really liked here because shooting landscape view didn't give me enough of the forest scene behind it, but I've tried it vertically too. And I, I just didn't like the composition that I got. And I passed over this bridge and I wasn't even going to this waterfall. I was going to a different one down the road and I started to think, okay, I'm starting to get a different sense of this and think of different ways that I can frame this up. And what I decided to go with were three separate landscape view shots and compositions, but create a vertical panorama using those that created almost like a one by one ratio view of this scene that allowed me with a wide angle lens to get as much into the sides and also into the top and bottom using the pano that I stitched together vertically. So I was really happy how this came out. The detail that came out of this pano stitch was incredible. I was honestly shocked that it did come out this well, but it really captures the whole scene that 
I've been trying to capture for so many years and appreciate this place so much. One of my favorite places to be in the entire world and I'm really glad that I finally got the image that I can appreciate from that place in a final pano stitch. So that's kind of it guys. Those are my favorite 10 images from 2020. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you guys for making 2020 so fun on YouTube to kind of get away from everything that happened elsewhere. So cheers. Here's to a more healthy, uh, more happy, more joyful 2021. And hopefully I'll see you guys out on the trail sometime.